I thought this puzzle was interesting and wanted to look at solving it by hand and then by writing a program. We are to substitute a number for each letter to make a valid mathematical expression. Uh, assume that each letter uh, is a unique digit. And you may want to pause here uh, if you want to solve this on your own. Uh, so my first question for this uh, is what kind of mathematical expression uh, is this? And to me it looks like a long division problem. Uh, if we just add a few lines in here, uh, I think you can see what I mean. Uh, this really starts to take the form uh, of what looks like a long uh, division problem. If we start to go through the motion of long division, we can look for clues as to the value of each letter uh, representing a digit. Uh, so the first hint um, looks like a set of repeated letters. So a two-digit number represented by AB represents the divisor in the problem. And those same letters also appear here as the product of AB uh, times F. F being the first number uh, or the first digit in the quotient uh, and the result uh, of the division process. So if we look at F uh, times AB being equal to AB, uh, that kind of tells us a, a little bit about what F might be. So F times AB equals AB this implies that F is equal to 1 since anything multiplied by 1 is the same number. So substitute 1 wherever there is an F in the problem. So I will change F uh, to 1 uh, there in the quotient and here and here and there and there and one last time uh, right there. So now we've changed all the S to 1 and we're ready to move on to the next step uh, and the next step we would take in division would be to subtract uh, right here and so CD minus AB uh, is going to be equal to 11 or 1 1. The E would be brought down after the subtraction so D minus B uh, is equal to 1 and C minus A equals a 1. Uh, or if we work, rework those equations uh, a little bit, D uh, would be equal to B plus 1 uh, and C would be equal to A plus 1. And I will just make a note of that on the list over there. Uh, and since we don't know what A or B is yet, uh, we don't have the final value uh, for C. Uh, and D. So E is brought down and then the next digit in the quotient would be multiplied times the divisor. That means that G uh, would be multiplied times uh, AB uh, to get a result of 1HH. -H. So we can say um, G times AB is 1HH. -H. What does that imply? Uh, nothing that I can see so far so we'll just move on and look at the next step in the process. So right here, uh, we would start subtracting. So we would take E uh, minus H, and that would give us E. So does that imply that H um, is equal to zero? Um, maybe. Uh, I can think of one other possibility. Uh, what if H was nine uh, and E was eight? Uh, and then there would be a carry from the next column over. Um, so 18 minus 9 could really be 9. Uh, so let's not declare H to be 0 just yet. Uh, let's keep going. So if we look at the next column, uh, 1 uh, minus H uh, is equal to 1. Um, and then the next column, uh, 1 uh, minus 1 here, uh, and there's nothing here because you don't usually list leading zeros, uh, but it doesn't look like we have uh, the case that there would be a carry. 
uh, there. So that sort of implies the same thing, that h would be equal to 0. And without uh, really a carry uh, coming over, we're pretty sure that uh, h is 0 at this point. And again, the 1 minus 1 here, we're not going to list the 0 here. Uh, so we're not going to put the leading 0 and h, h here. Um, but that's an implied 0. So we add h to the list. And we start substituting everywhere we see an h. Uh, we'll put in a 0. And so we'll put in a 0 there uh, and the h next to it. And that is pretty much it for h. So at this point, I want to back up a step uh, and look at uh, the g times a b again now that we filled in some values g times a b is going to be equal to 100 and so we'll list that here uh, does that help us well g a uh, and b are still unknown here uh, but take a look at this for a second and see if you have any ideas on how uh, we can continue from this point and so it kind of leads me to look at well what are the factors of 100? So what could uh, a single letter G times a double letter or a double digit letter A be uh, equal to 100 B? So here is a list of factors uh, of 100 and we'll look at each one of these and, and see uh, if we can eliminate a few. So the first one I eliminate because uh, it's a one times a three digit number, uh, so that can't be uh, a, b, and we already know what zero is. So zero is already h, so it's not going to be a or b. We can also eliminate two times 50. Uh, it has the correct form. It's a one digit number times a two digit number, but the second digit where b would be, uh, it's zero, and we already know zero is represented by h, so we can strike that out. Um, 4 times 25, it's possible uh, if it's the right form, one digit times two, a two-digit number. Uh, we'll come back to that. We can eliminate uh, 5 times 20 again because in the place of the 0 is where B should be, and B, we know B is not 0 because H is 0, and 10 times 10 uh, is, is out on two different counts because it's a two-digit number times a two-digit number. Uh, that doesn't match our pattern. So it looks like we've settled in on 4 times 5 is the right uh, factor here, and that also gives us our values uh, for uh, G, A, uh, and B. So in other words, uh, it implies that G uh, is going to be 4, uh, A is 2, uh, and B is 5. So we'll add these values uh, to our list and G equals to 4 we'll add in uh, A equal to 2 uh, and B equals to 5 uh, we can now also fill in other values related to A uh, and B that we didn't know before uh, so C is A plus 1 uh, so now we can record C as uh, 2 plus 1 which is 3 uh, and D is equal to B plus 1, uh, B is 5, uh, so D must be 6, okay? We can now also substitute more uh, numbers uh, in for the letters in the division problem. Um, so since A is 2, uh, everywhere we see an A in the problem, we'll go ahead and fill in a 2, uh, just there and there. Uh, and then next we'll look at B. Uh, so everywhere there's a B in the problem, we will put in 5. There's a few more of those, uh, but we'll put in a 5 there, um, right there, there, and there one more time right there. Uh, next, we look at C, which is the value of 3. So every time we see uh, a C uh, anywhere in the problem, uh, we will put... Uh, that one, there's only one occurrence, so we'll replace that with uh, three. Okay, next on the list is D, uh, and so we'll replace uh, that one D with the, its value of six. The next part is multiplying E uh, times 25, 
Uh, so e times 25 is going to be uh, equal to uh, 1 e5. So we kind of get a pattern here. We've got the first and last digit uh, of the result, but not the middle digit uh, and not the original number e. So the only numbers so far, uh, or the, I should say the only digits unaccounted for so far, uh, is 7, 8, and 9. So we can test each one by multiplying it times 25 uh, to see what that gives us uh, and see if any of those match the pattern. And if we look at that, since only one of them matches the pattern, uh, 7 times 25 matches, um, we have the, the right digit. Um, so only two end in five that we're expecting in our result, and only one starts with a one uh, in the result. So E must be equal to seven. So we can strike uh, the other two possibilities, and we'll go ahead and add E uh, to our list of values uh, and set it equal to seven. Uh, and then we'll substitute E in to our problem. So when we see an E here, um, and throughout the problem, we will substitute in sevens uh, for each one of those. And then change that G to a four. Uh, and now we have our solution and have gone through the problem by hand. In the next video, we'll look at writing a program to solve the same problem.